Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to look at what is meant by a projectile. So let's get started. We say that any object that is launched and moves under the influence of gravity is called a projectile. Some common examples of projectiles that you'll see in the Higher Physics course include things like balls, darts, cannonballs, and bullets, as all of these can move with projectile motion. And just to show you a little animation to help you visualize this, here we've got a cannon which will fire a cannonball with full projectile motion, and we've also got a plane which will drop a package out of the sky with half the projectile motion. So here we've got the full projectile motion and half the motion. Now it's worth pointing out that the motion for the object dropped from the plane is the kind of motion that you looked at at National 5 level when we thought about projectiles, where the motion of the projectile was sort of half a parabola. Whereas what we're now doing in the higher course is we're considering both types of motion. So we're considering half the parabola shape, but also the full parabola like the cannonball with that full projectile motion. Going back to the notes now, we say that the path taken by a projectile is called its trajectory. And in this section, we will investigate the following cases of projectiles. So there's four different cases that we will look at. These are objects that are dropped from rest, objects that are launched vertically upwards, objects that are launched horizontally, and objects that are launched at an angle. And it's really this last one that is the one that you've not seen before. We have seen these other ones before at National 5 level. So in this picture, this sort of summarizes the four cases. So here we've got somebody dropping an object from rest. Here we've got somebody launching an object vertically upwards. Here we've got somebody launching an object horizontally. And lastly, we've got an object being launched at an angle. The last thing to note is that in our study of projectile motion, we will always assume that air resistance has no effect because if we did take air resistance into account, it would make analysing our problems a lot more difficult. It also helps to sketch the situation first when attempting projectile problems. So often what you'll see in the worked examples is that we'll sketch a situation first so that we can then go on and analyse it. And that's just to help us visualise what's actually happening in the question. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.